In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you all. Once again, welcome to this lovely church of St. Francis of Assisi in Aberdeen. Welcome. Once again, we call to mind our sins. We lay them on God's holy altar, confident of his desire to forgive and to redeem us rather than to punish. And so I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, the Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God Almighty God, that we may put off our old selves, our old self, with all its evil ways, and live as Christ did. For through the healing Easter mysteries, you have conformed us to Christ's nature. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat for the readings. In the first reading, we're introduced to Stephen. He's a deacon. He brings food parcels to the poor. He's brought before the Sanhedrin the accusation he has caused a sort of disturbance, filling people's minds, they claim, with nonsense. Let's listen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen was filled with grace and power and began to work miracles and great signs among the people. But then certain people came forward to debate with Stephen, some from Cyrene and Alexandria, who were members of the synagogue called the Synagogue of Freedmen, and others from Cilicia and Asia. They found they could not get the better of him because of his wisdom, and because it was the spirit that prompted what he said. So they procured some men to say, We heard him using blasphemous language against Moses and against God. Having in this way turned the people against him, as well as the elders and scribes, they took Stephen by surprise and arrested and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They put up false witnesses to say, This man is always making speeches against the holy place and the law. We have heard him say that Jesus the Nazarene is going to destroy this place and alter the traditions that Moses handed down to us. The members of the Sanhedrin all looked intently at Stephen and his face appeared to them like the face of an angel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. They are happy whose life is blameless. They are happy whose life is blameless. The princes sit plotting against me. I ponder on your statutes. Your will is my delight. Your statutes are my counselors. They are happy whose life is blameless. I declared my ways and you answered. Teach me your statutes. Make me grasp the way of your precepts, and I will muse on your wonders. They are happy whose life is blameless. Keep me from the way of error, and teach me your law. I have chosen the way of truth, with your decrees before me. They are happy whose life is blameless. Please stand to honor the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. 
Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory Glory to you. Just as Stephen fed the poor in Jerusalem, so Jesus now feeds once again his people. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, his disciples saw him walking in the water. And next day the crowd that had stayed on the other side saw that only one boat had been there, and that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples but that the disciples had set off by themselves. Other boats, however, had put in from Tiberias, near the place where the bread had been eaten. And when the people saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into those boats and crossed to Capernaum to look for Jesus. And when they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, you are not looking for me because you have seen the miracles and signs, but because you had all the bread that you wanted to eat. But don't work for food that cannot last, but work for food that endures to eternal life, the kind of food the Son of Man is offering you, for in him the Father God himself has set his seal. And then they said to him, What must we do if we are to do the works that God wants? And Jesus gave them this answer. This is working for God. You must believe in the one whom he has sent. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please take a seat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we meet Stephen, and Stephen is a deacon. He has a specific task in the early church. He's the one with six other men who deliver food parcels to widows. When a husband dies, the breadwinner has gone, but a woman still has to feed herself and look after her children. And the Greek word for the little bundle that's given by the deacons to widows is trophy. It's often translated as food. It's often translated as bread. Bread. But it's much more than bread. Otherwise, these families would live on nothing but carbohydrates. And so trophy is a generic term. The diet would be varied. Philip, Stephen, Nicanor would carry a bundle of food, a variety, fruit, olives, perhaps even wine. Wine had a very, very low alcohol content, was drunk by practically everyone. Vegetables, a variety of healthy food. In the same in Aberdeen, Church of St. Francis gathers together food. People come to Mass, they place it in specially appointed shells, and a variety of food. Good vegetables, good Protein, good fruits, meat, feeds about 50 families every Wednesday night. But they were converts to the Christian faith, and these were considered to be second-class citizens. And when the early church fed orphaned families, they neglected whom they considered to be second-class citizens and these were mostly Greek-speaking. It would be terrible for Aberdeen, wouldn't it, if we were only kind to people who believed and were like ourselves. In Aberdeen, there are colossal numbers of people who have joined us from abroad. They are part of the church. We welcome them, and we love their present among us. Wherever the suffering is the greatest, the hunger is the greatest, then the church should be present, working, with the hungry, the poor, and the orphaned. So under God's guidance, the food bank in Jerusalem now needs more hands. 
and it's the genius of God that seven men are appointed, but they're not Jews. All the men who are appointed are, in a sense, foreigners. They're incomers. You could say they are migrant labour. Look at the names. Stephanos, he's not a Jew, he's Greek. Philippos, lovely Greek word. What does it mean, the lover of horses? Philippos, Nicanor, Greek name. Timon, he's a Greek, so is Permenus, so is Nicolaus, specifically. Someone from Antioch, that's not Jerusalem, that's Turkey. They're all incomers into the city. And the genius of God that they join in the distribution of bread. The church is a wide knot to gather people from everywhere. All parts of the Mediterranean basin meet in Jerusalem. When they're hungry, they are fed. I was hungry, Jesus said in Matthew's Gospel, and you fed me. So come into my kingdom. And I had my own strange food experience. You perhaps heard it before. I was in Bolivia, in Latin America. It's the highest, highest capital city in the world. La Paz. La Paz is at 3,600 meters. My goodness, no wonder I got altitude sickness. I didn't know what it was. I know it now. It's twice as high, that capital city, as the highest mountain in the United Kingdom, which is Ben Nevis, just slightly over twice the height. And at night, I'm eating in a restaurant. And at the restaurant, typically, it's in a poor area, there's an armed guard. And he stands at the door to monitor it. Who comes in? A bodyguard. And who leaves? He's got a cosh, typically. He's got a cosh, he's got a gun. And the windows are barred to stop people stretching in to steal food. But outside, a little group of people watch me. And as I transfer the food from the plate to my mouth, eyes follow every action. And I feel guilty. I'm a priest. I'm eating food that they can only dream of. I've got more dollars in my pocket that only exist in their dreams. And suddenly, a small man, this is true, jumps up from outside, he's been watching me, every fortful of food. He bursts through the door, he runs past the guard, he runs to my table and he grabs a mouthful of food, followed closely by the security guard, ready to strike him with a wooden baton. What would Jesus do? Well, just gently, gently, gently tell the guard, let the man sit down, give him to eat, Whatever he wants, let a feast. And somebody said I reflected that today. It was June 2001, some years ago. And I remember in my mind, and I taste it again, the smell of acute poverty, the smell of urine, as if it's never gone away. And I was the one, he was the one rather, he was the one smelling of sheep. It should have been me. But it gave me a much better idea of why I am here on God's earth. There are so many hungry people in the world today. They're hungry for the word of God. They're hungry to be told that they're loved, to be told that they are forgiven. Please, God, send these people into our lives. Give us the courage and the grace to comfort them. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious be And these days in the church, we miss the congregation above all. We miss our young people. It's lovely to bless them at Mass. Just don't people say, what do you talk? Do you talk to them about God? Well, talk to them about their pets, you know. How's your cat and your dog and your budgie? And they love that. That's their life. You know, and that's what they connect with. And they love their little pets, and they love coming to Mass. And in the wall of the church here, some of them have written the reasons why they come to Mass and what they should be doing. Uh, when we boys written, uh, pray, be quiet, don't jump. <laughs> I've never yet seen kids jumping, you know, their height during Mass. But this is what they see, and they like it. And they come dancing back from the children's liturgy, waving the little artwork that they've done, you know. They've enjoyed it. God for them is good. 
And so we look forward to our young people joining us when the church is open again. Lord, hear us. <clears throat> Lord, hear us. We know that people today feel the pangs of loneliness perhaps more than ever. You know, ask God to give them the courage to see it through, to use all of us, myself included, to fr not fritter away these precious hours, but to use them well, to use them profitably. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Hear us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever, by the mystery of his water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And Lord, wash away all my iniquities, cleanse me from all of my sins. And pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. And now an application of gel, a protective measure which all of us, please, all of anybody present will have done, done before they come and before they leave. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with these sacrificial offerings, so that we may be purified by your graciousness and may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father Almighty and Eternal, through Christ our Lord. When Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, and through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising to life, the life of all of us has risen. And so overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people rejoices in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. And in the same way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once we give you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, with you, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them, Lord into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. I will stand and pray with confidence to the Father, using the words which Jesus, who is our Saviour, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away all the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Now the sacrament of Holy Communion is offered and members will come forward individually keeping the protocol about two metres. And as they do so, we remember those people at home, we pray for them and we bless them. They long to receive Christ again sacramentally. And so an act of spiritual communion for those people at home watching. My Jesus, I believe that you, you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. The communion antiphon. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives it, do I give it to you, says the Lord. Alleluia. And now the Blessed Sacrament is exposed in the monstrance, and we thank God for his many gifts, of which we are often so undeserving. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, you restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Jesus. Increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Easter sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I will finish with a Lovely hymn, very well known, God of mercy and compassion, look with pity upon me. We'll just sing one verse. Peace and blessed of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon me, your unworthy servant, upon the people present, upon these people watching prayerfully at home.
We ask God to bless you during this day. May we all use the hours given to us. May we use them well. God bless.